Zone 3 Podcast. I am Robert. Yes, and I am Reggie. And uh, today we are joined by Matthew Hayes. Thank yes. you for joining us, Matthew. Oh, thanks for having me. And you me, guys. come to us from North Carolina, I believe, right? I do. With I do. Many nicknames, too, right? Yeah, many nicknames. <laughs> yes. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I've got some new ones for you after uh, spending the evening with you last night. Ah, uh, well, I mean, Actually, we had that to... sounded bad. <laughs> <laughs> we, uh, <laughs> they really do take very good care of their guests. <laughs> and, uh, <laughs> that's uh, just to be clear, <laughs> <laughs> we, uh, yeah, we met with for drinks last night. And it was a lot awesome. of fun, actually. So we yeah. shut the place down, actually. We, so. we have to celebrate. Reggie's birthday. It was Reggie's That's right, birthday. I did. I leveled up this year. Turned 21. 21. <laughs> Proud of him. Right, right. They Finally grow up able so to fast. drink. <laughs> yeah. right. Surprisingly, he wasn't able to hold his alcohol last night. <laughs> I was I was drinking milk the entire time. So, but uh, it was it was a it was a good time. I had a great time. Right. Yeah. Well, uh, let's get back to the subject. <laughs> Today we're talking about T1 recovery time, and uh, we thought you would be a good guest for that, and you got some visuals we're excited about, and so if you would, just kind of take over whenever you'd like. Yeah, give us a little background, too, because you, you, you come from interesting places, I thought. Sure, like. sure, sure. Kind of a good um, backstory. Yeah, so, so um, I, I've been really fortunate to be able to have um, some very smart friends that take some time, that have taken a lot of time with me, and, um, and I, it just... This one specific subject, it's, it's just all throughout MR, all throughout MR. And if you really understand T1 recovery, then you understand ASL. You understand it's a huge thing inside of cardiac. You, uh, you understand contrast and weighting. And I mean, it's T1 recovery is something I think is taught incorrectly. And um, just Reggie thought it would be a good idea for me to kind of clear it up or teach it kind of how I, I taught it because if I'm being super honest, I didn't really understand it completely. Like inversion recovery, I didn't understand it completely until probably two years ago, which is, you know, a little embarrassing, but everyone that's watching though is about to have their mind blown too. <laughs> everyone thinks that they know, but yeah, it's about to get real. No, it's, and that's true. Like we're taught, um, you know, we're, we're, we're taught, I and mean, I think this is the problem. Like we're, we're taught that um, when we do a 180 degree inversion or something along those lines, we, we're going to flip it this way and it's going to relax this way back up. Mm -hmm. And I think that's, uh, and, and that really leads to a lot of misconceptions. I mean, after a while I was just like, it doesn't quite make sense to me, but, um, but I'm going to convert this to Canon and, and right. this is the way I'm going to go about my day. And, uh, and, and finally it was explained to me by m my buddy, Brian and, and it just opened up so many doors for me in, in terms of MR physics and, and pulse sequence understanding and things along those lines. So It's like when you're playing Mortal Kombat and you're like on that final stage and you finally unlock that, that, that secret character? I, absolutely. <laughs> Tell me more <laughs> nice. about this. He's yes. been on a Mortal Kombat kit recently. <laughs> Mortal Kombat 11, you like know. The fourth Somebody come see me. <laughs> come see me. I know exactly what you're talking about because I'm very young. <laughs> <laughs> so, um, but yeah, so, so I think, so the thing about it is, is I, I've got my medical grade markers. Reggie brought these for me. That's right. Um, and so. I checked their TR too, so they're legit. Really? Okay. Yeah. Amazing. <laughs> Amazing. So, so, um, so what's going to happen? I mean, we do give a 180 degree pulse, spins everything down to the, to, to the, negative B0. But the thing about it is, is that we see things like this, right? I don't know about you guys, but you see, and I've got friends of mine that specifically make fun of my drawing and they take pictures of things and create like Christmas cards with it. It's awful, but <laughs> it's probably going to happen here. <laughs> so you see these T1 recovery curves, right? And let's say that's fat and this is water. So I've done a 180 degree inversion pulse. So if we did a 90, that's saturation recovery. But if we do a, a 180, that's going to be inversion recovery. And the whole point of any time we're, in, we're giving an inversion pulse is to make something dark. Right. Right. So, and so what I didn't really understand uh, what's happening here. So what we're trying to do, right, we have, we have a the 180. And then at some point, right, we're going to have, we're going to wait a certain amount of time. And then, you know, that's our, that's our TI, right? Mm -hmm. And then the time that it takes 
Uh, so we're going to do a 90 degree pulse, then we're going to read out our echo train length. Everybody knows that stuff. Um, but the key here um, that, that, that I didn't understand, right? I thought that it really, when you do a, a 180, we're doing a 180, and then we're waiting for it to cross. This is what the null point looks like. But that's not that's not r the reason. You know what I mean? Like right. at that point, when we gave a, a 90 degree excitation pulse, it would be back into the right, back into the negative, and then from the time that we started here, it would continue to recover, and it just didn't it just didn't add up for me. Right. And so so what I found out is that it's it's it it goes. You know, in, in all inversions, whether it's a, a stir or anything along those lines, they mm -hmm. are T1 weighted. It is based off of what I always say, what's, what's able to play the game of MRI, right? So, so only, just fun fact, only the protons that have either a positive or a negative mm -hmm. amount of B0, so longitudinal magnetization, right? If I have um, either positive magnetization or if I have negative magnetization, only those, and negative's not bad, positive's not any better, whatever. But um, whatever has had a chance to recover, that's the stuff that gets affected by the 90 degree pulse. Okay, so, right. and that's what I, what, that's, that's the big thing that I did not, I was missing, right? Because what's really gonna happen here is we give a 180 degree pulse, so we flip it. But then, this starts to die, like it starts to drop, and so that's what you're seeing here, you're seeing like, the net magnetization vector of fat, you see what I mean, is mm -hmm. getting smaller and smaller. And at some point, it's actually going to, it's going to come and it will have zero longitudinal magnetization. It's like it, 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 it stops and then it starts to regrow in the positive direction. But if I hit it at or near, if I hit it at or near that null point right there when I hit the 90, it doesn't get to play the game of MRI. There's no protons that get affected by the 90 degree pulse. I, I, you know what I mean? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> and so, and so um, I, I just, I got it so wrong. I mean, and, and the thing about it is, I mean, if you're a little bit early or you're a little bit late, as long as you're doing magnitude reconstruction, then they will have the same signal intensity. And so, um, so in this case, I mean, the, the difference, and that's just our time, our inversion time. So right. we're trying to make it to where um, either water, that's why we need a longer inversion time, because water has a much longer uh, T1 recovery time. It takes it a lot longer to cross the null point there. And so, um, I mean, that's just the, that's the key for me on this. And, uh, and, and inversion really, for me, it opened up arterial spin labeling. I mean, I, what you're trying to do is you're trying to have an inversion time to be able to, I mean, you guys do arterial spin labeling, right? Right. I mean, I've, I've seen plenty of people, they get a very important phone call when they're asked to talk about arterial. Yeah, I, sorry, I can't, I gotta go. <laughs> and they, they, but it's actually really, really simple. I mean, you're doing, you're doing a, and in, you're, you're putting in a, a sat band or something along those lines uh, down in the carotids, mm -hmm. depending on if it's passel or picassel and things like that. But you are going to not apply that sat band, and you're going to allow for blood to go up inside the brain. And then you are going to apply the sat band, and you're trying to have an inversion to where the blood that was inverted here is crossing the null point once it gets up inside the brain. So right. you're trying to kind of time that. And the same thing with cardiac, when you're doing morphology, right. when you're doing um, flare. I mean, it's, it's, it's all related. But, I mean, the whole point of ASL is that you're going to do one without the without the inversion so mm -hmm. you see the brain filled with blood and then you do one with the inversion and that's called the, the tag and that way you see the brain without the blood and so per, it's non-contrast perfusion All right really great for um for you know people like alzheimer's patients right because if you do actually you know actual t2 star dsc perfusion right. somebody moves and then you got to repeat that again and again here we're using the patient's own blood as the contrast agent and i think in that case some people um it's a common misconception that the inversion is the thing that's really really important to be able to see the blood like make like give the blood some kind of like special sauce right. but it's not the case we're, we're doing it to where we can see the brain without the blood with the inversion and the brain filled with blood you know in the in the 
you so, know, control. So, so it's kind of like, a, like pretty much like a flare and a stir, right? Yeah. Where your no link, like one is going to have that dark CSF and one's going to have that bright CSF, right? And yeah. it's all dependent on where you're falling at with that null point. That's right? exactly right. So if I wanted, if I, let me see my, there we go. So if that's the case, if I was trying to do a, a stir here, what I'd like to do is I'd have my TI right around here, right? So if mm -hmm. you, that way, not very much fat or zero fat is, there is, at that point, there is no positive or negative amount of T1 recovery um, or longitudinal magnetization. And so that 90 degree pulse, it has plenty of water that at that point it's going to flip into the transverse plane. Right. Because I mean, if something's down, like something's <clears throat> negative and it's regrowing, if I hit it with a 90 at that point, it's gonna still hit up and, and, and go around yeah. in, in the transverse plane. Mm -hmm. And so uh, another thing that I find, like MSK, we have a lot of rads that, that sit there and say, oh, I, don't, I don't like a stir because the bone's so, uh, you know, and, and fat's so dark. Right. And, and, and I would tell them to change their inversion time to where there is a little bit of fat that's playing the game so it's more gray instead of black. So. Right. In this case, I mean, we just did a stir, right? But I mean, the only difference, I mean, there's a couple, but the main difference if we were doing a flare is just a longer TI time. So at that point, if you think about it, let's say this is fat and this is water. So we, we gave them a 180, right? So they're down here. And so fat is going to come and it's gonna regrow really, really fast. And that's what we're seeing right along this line. So and fat, and there's going to be things in between, but fat and water are always the polarizing right. uh, shortest, shortest T1 recovery time versus longest T1 recovery time, right. shortest T2 time, longest T2 time, you know, right. those kinds of things. Thank but God for that, because that's why we have a job, right? That's why we have a job, <laughs> yeah. And so, I mean, I was a terrible waiter. Um, I'd, have, I'd have, uh, have dreams that the people weren't getting their food, then have to wake up and actually do that job. So <laughs> I, I can't hang. So hats off to all of our uh, service people. But, um, but so at this point, if we just take a snapshot right, right here, at that point in time, at this point, water has had a, our fat has had a chance to fully recover, and water is coming down and right going to flip and cross that null point. So if we excite at that oh, point, yeah, yeah. then there is no water that gets to play the game. And so, meanwhile, fat gets, f and, and everything else, like, I don't mean to be, so, you know, you have different types of tissues that are recovering, right. and they're going to be either, they're going to be, I mean, everything at this point for water, everything, will, everything else will have a positive amount of recovery, you know, so in this case, if we're... So, if we're, so we're basing that time, it's, it's our TR, right? So... That's why the TR and the TI play such a big role with each other? Yeah, so, so in that case, so the TR, um, if, if, exactly. I mean, we're, we're, we have to do a TI, and that's going to, um, going to determine the amount of time and the amount or what type of tissue gets to be excited. Right. But at the same time, let's say we hit water right here at, the, at zero. The reason why your flare is so long your TR is so long on the flares because yeah. if we immediately, uh, if we immediately read out and then excite it again, water hasn't even had a chance to continue to recover. Oh. So, so at the same time, if that's the case, then water and that next 180, right. it would not, it would not be able to be um, fully uh. excited or f fully inverted. We c we can't manipulate it. Right. Meanwhile, we can manipulate all of, of let's say myocardium and fat in this case. So, um, yeah, it's, it, and it's, and it's a concept that, that, I mean, I, I, I teach some classes and people are like, yeah, I understand this stuff. And then right. I show them and they're like, oh, yeah, no, okay. I got it now. And, and it's, it's, I think T1 recovery is one of the most underrated, uh, and, and underutilized bits of uh and not really applied all that much or not really understood and so it can be really limiting to someone that wants to expand their their physics knowledge and right. be able to do more things like so when we're doing things like i know cardiac they do up like almost triple irs right you guys do yeah yeah three inversions so those scans have to be long right because you're waiting even longer because of how many inversions you're doing 
so so we or cardiac i guess well we mostly do, I got, sorry go ahead okay. yeah no well, I was just thinking we, we mostly do double IRs, but double. Okay. I guess there's a couple of protocols we do do triples. Triple. Well, so yeah, so so and if you're doing triple IRs, right? I mean, that's that's gonna, the first first inversion is going to be non-selective. It's going to invert everything inside the tran inside of the uh -huh. transmitting body coil, right? Right. And then it's going to reinvert just the slice. That's so, so I didn't even know that for a while. I didn't right. know reinversion wasn't what was a possibility. But right after inversion, you reinvert just the slice you care about. And so at that point, everything's locked and loaded. Uh, fat, um, water, myocardium, everything is, everything, that slice is, has complete, we've completely recovered it on purpose. But then, I mean, we don't want that. We want dark blood, if that's the case, right? Right, right. But the original inversion, that was, that, remember, everything in the body right. experienced that inversion. And so then we're waiting a certain amount of time for that inverted blood to cross the null point while we're imaging in diastole, so and it comes in and replaces that the the blood that, uh, that would be blood. able to be excited. Right. So there's a lot going on. That's and a the, lot. That's <laughs> a lot. And so and so the, and and the, a triple a triple IR right at this point. So what we're doing? Let's say what we got to do at this point. If uh, I've got full fat, right? I've got mm -hmm. full fat, and myocardium's definitely playing the game a decent amount. Right? right, and so just inside the slice, and so then we reinvert the fat, so and then it crosses the null point at the exact same time as water, and so you have dark blood, you have um, dark fat, and so that can be that's how that's how that works. It's pretty clever to be yeah, able to. Yeah, that is clever. So so a triple IR is basically a stir in right. cardiac and With fat a, sat technically right. <laughs> A fat sat stir? No, well, no, it's not a fat sat stir. I mean, you can you can do you can apply fat sat uh, separately, and you can have a, a double IR with fat sat. Um, but if you're doing a triple IR, you are doing like a Still like a stir. A, yeah. a stir. You're getting you're using T1 inversion to be able to make water and blood cross the null point at the same time. So that's your mechanism for when the actual excitation happens. Right. Then only myocardium. So in this case, right, myocardium is relaxing slower, or you know what I mean? So maybe at this point in time, we still have that much myocardium inside of the, I hope that makes sense, something like that. No, we have that sure. much of the myocardium that's still playing the game. So the 90 degree excitation pulse will flip that into the transverse plane. Meanwhile, fat and, and, uh, and myo, and sorry, fat and uh, water or blood, inflowing blood are going to be dark. So we have a really, really cool contrast yeah. between myocardium's bright and... One of the yeah. uh, one of the big things that really helped with the demonstration when I first saw it was just how you demonstrate it instead of the whole knocking down and then it spinning back up, the way it recovers like this, like the straight up recovery. Yeah. I think that helps you understand that null point so much better. I mean, it's and that's just the... And that, that was the light bulb moment for me, but I mean, it's... um. Because you either have this much water playing the game or, you know, a little bit of water or no water. Yeah. You know, type of thing, depending on where that no point is. Right. right. It's not like here or there, you know. It, 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 exactly right. I mean, it just didn't quite add up. Right. And so, And so it really does unlock, and I mean everything from neuro to, to cardiac to, I mean, just everything. Any, everything. Yeah. I mean, right. And you can now kind of understand... I mean, the thing about a stir, if you're going to do a stir, it's going to affect all, um, it's going to affect all tissues. That's the thing about it. So whereas a spectral fat sat, that's only going to affect, uh, going to affect one peak. And when I say all spectral right. fat sat, I think, you know, we, we've all seen this, right? We see fat and water. Right. Depending on the vendor, you might have these backwards and things <laughs> like that. But in this case, we are, we are looking for, uh, we're looking for, let's say, if this is water, you know, we're trying to make it to where we put a certain bandwidth of frequencies, a certain range of frequencies into the patient to be able to just excite fat. We put it into the transverse plane, we turn on a gradient to deface it. It's called a crusher gradient. And then, um, and then it doesn't get to play the game. Then we follow up directly after that with uh, just a regular pulse and everything with water gets to play the game. But, but, you know, think about it. Like, if you have a, a sweet little grandma and she can't, uh, Granny. She can't, she can't uh, you know, 
put her arm Superman style or something like that, if you if you are you know you've got her in the bore right and the and her elbow is over here. This is amazing. I know. I'm just <laughs> I'm just gonna bad. sign this one. It's perfect. It'll, this is available for purchase at my Etsy shop. <laughs> so, um, but but in this case, if you have you know you have your patient, it's even my goodness, just getting better and better. But Chocolate over, chip? over here, you're not gonna do you know not gonna have very good fat sat right because right. you'll have the peak of death. You know what I mean? Like you'll have your water peak, and then you have, and that's because the the these protons, I mean, in a perfect world, it would look like this. Right. You know what I mean? That would be right. two huge groups that have the exact same precessional frequency. But over here, outside of the, the, the center, of you know, an isocenter, these protons are spinning at all sorts of different, like a really wide range. Right. So we're only putting in our fat sat pulse here. And so you have really, really bad fat sat. These, this fat is unaffected. So you have bright fat, right? Right. But inversion doesn't care about this at all. And so that's the reason. Like, it doesn't matter where my elbow is, it's still going to happen at the same rate. And so that's the reason why inversion, I mean, for stir in this case, right. is, is not sensitive to B0 in homogeneities, not right. sensitive to magnetic field having imperfections inside of it. Distortion so, and artifact, things like that, right? Yeah. Yeah, I mean, yeah, you've For got sure. other things at play. I mean, you, if I mean, as you get out further away, you start to have drop off, and the manufacturers only have a certain, um, like, useful area that has right. you know, that are affected by gradients and things along those lines. But I just, that's just a Try useful a clean fat set. That's the way you go, right? Yeah, start I mean, so offset. yeah, I mean, so yeah, uh, there's so many different fat suppression methods. But, um, but inversion recovery allows anything to be inverted that you want. I mean, something, something new that I'm, um, have you guys ever done phase sensitive inversion recovery? Phase. PSIRs, people call it. Yeah. Oh, yeah, yeah, I've seen it, yeah. So, so the problem sometimes with stir is, yeah, sorry. The <laughs> problem with stir, there we go. Um, That's what that was for. I was wondering. <laughs> can be very useful <laughs> in and out of the office. <laughs> so the problem with stir, like if we have this same thing that's going on, um, one of the problems is, let's say we have just two different, two different uh, tissue types, X and Y. So there we go. There is X. Is there double-sided markers are right. a game changer. Right. And we have this one right here, okay? If we have a bad inversion time, right? So if we have a, a 180, and like right here in the center, like right there. Anybody seeing the problem that's about to occur here? Is that if you're the doing magnitude inverted. reconstruction, I have just as much of that as I have of that. So if I put a 90 degree pulse into it, they will both be the same signal intensity. Right. And that's the reason why in stirs and things like that, you can change the TE and that gives you another mechanism oh, yeah. for, for um, for altering contrast, but right. what 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 happens here, and in this analogy, uh, let's this is perfect actually. So in this case, we actually uh, with a phase sensitive inversion recovery, let's just go and kind of look just on this plane. So you're looking straight down, right? And so I see like right now, these are aligned just like this. Mm -hmm. But as soon as I put in the 90 degree pulse, they're going to be facing in different directions inside the transverse plane. And when you do phase sensitive inversion recovery, and that's the reason, you know, in cardiac, right? You do the, you do uh, delayed myocardial enhancement. And if your inversion time is off, then PSIR is the uh, phase sensitive is gonna be your mechanism. Cause what, what manufacturers will do is they will sit there and say, okay, if you have a positive change in phase, if you're pointing this way, mm -hmm. we'll give you a bright pixel. And if you are pointing this way, will give you a dark pixel. So you have an additional mechanism oh. for contrast if we're being sensitive for phase inside the transverse plane. Hence phase sensitivity. That's exactly right. <laughs> nice. Yeah, so I mean inversion just, it just goes and goes and goes. So I would encourage new techs, old techs, um, anybody to to revisit this concept and and um, and see how it can help you and your patients. And No, for sure. So and revisit nice. this YouTube video. That was actually really helpful. I yeah, thought, that little diagram you did. I, I saw you sit there and go, 
Okay. Yeah. I had that same also, still moment. recovering from last night. <laughs> <laughs> now, now, I feel like uh, you come from humble beginnings. I know we kind of missed out on your little your background a little bit. Tell us a little bit about yourself. Sure, sure. Um, yeah, I, I, um, I've been scanning for a while now, and uh, I'm all of a sudden, I used to be the young person in the department, and now I'm old, but I uh, <laughs> turned 40 in March. Leveled up. Hey, yeah. Nice. <laughs> but uh, no, I, I started scanning. Uh, I got really lucky and got a, a 3T job right out. I went from 0.2 to 3T in, in one day. Okay. And so I was like, wow, there's, there's a basilar artery there. You see that <laughs> on that MRA? So uh, it, was, it was quite the change. I, I, not all that smart. Uh, but I find this stuff genuinely interesting. I have very nice people that spend time with me and help me to continue and improve. Um, I I went um, I taught at the university level. It took me about five or six years to be able to to really kind of start to get my handle on this. And and um, I, I got a job as um, as a professor down at uh, Adventist um, Advent Health University in Orlando. Oh, nice. And I was uh, I was I was uh, an alumni there, so they. They um, they asked me to come in and 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 in retrospect, I mean, I probably said some things that were not true, you know, <laughs> uh, when I was first starting to teach. But I mean, MRI is one of those things that you're just going to be chasing forever. It's not something you're ever going to get. It's kind of depressing, but kind of exciting at the same no, time. For real. I mean, we keep hearing that. That's a recurring theme on the podcast. <laughs> and no one no one's going to get it all. Right. Um, but uh, but I mean, as as time's gone on, I mean, I've. I've got a good network that I'm, I continue to try to be like. I mean, you've got people that are, you know, they, they don't, um, they may not appear on a podcast like this, but uh, they, they, they are the best of the best of the best. And right. I'm very fortunate to be able to work with those people and then basically pass it forward to other people to make it to where their journey will be more direct than mine. Right. And so when I was uh, a professor, um, there, I, I started realizing how broken MRI education was. And, and so I started just kind of formulating this idea to kind of teach, kind of teach MRI the way that I would like to learn it and like the, what I would want if I were a student, if what I would want if I was um, a professor for my students. Right. And which was an insane idea because I mean, I didn't know how much work it was going to be. So I started uh, imaging you. Um, nice. in 2000, 2013, 2014, I got together a, an, an animation team and, and those guys, uh, I mean, just to give you an idea, one, one second of animation takes about one hour of human time. I mean, and, and so that we, we decided we were going to teach spatial encoding. We're going to teach, I mean, we we're going to teach, um, hardware and physics and uh, pulse sequences and things along those lines right. and um, from animation. And so from, from that standpoint, we didn't know how long it was going to take. But I mean, to do this right, I mean, try to, teaching techs is, is difficult. Teaching animators physics <laughs> is even more difficult, you right. know. And so, and so uh, it took us five, five and a half years to make this. We have, we have four and a half, five, five hours worth of animation inside. That's um, awesome. And so, so it's just, and by the time we figured out how much work this was, we were halfway done. And so we just had, to, we were halfway across the Atlantic. Yeah. yeah. Like, no to, turning back now. Yeah, we had to go. <laughs> and so, uh, and so. That's where we're at too right now. <laughs> <laughs> so, but, um, but it, it's, I mean, the, the important thing is, I mean, hopefully making it to where people have better, better tools because MRI, you're kind of at the mercy of who taught you, you know, you're, right. you're you could be getting this stuff 18th hand. Not you know right. why do we do this? We just do it. Just just do it. It's you know, just how it's, it's just how it's done. Yeah. You know? So I call that like MRI folklore, like how <laughs> things just are passed down through the centuries of right. of, of scanning and a lot of uh, not not necessarily purposeful misinformation, but just kind of this is the way I was taught. This this is the way that it, you know it's got to be true, right? right. So this in the field is so dynamically changing yep. that I mean what you know yesterday might not even be true. So something that you knew ten years ago, I mean could have been you know completely way off type of thing sure so, sure no it, it is good and it is good to have animations when you're learning stuff like this because we're visual and that's why we have a visual podcast right it's because when you're in radiology you know we're we're kind of visual people so um the mm. animations all go such a long way it really does no it's it's we're, we've been really happy with it and um, I mean, we're going to continue to improve i'm going to continue to learn more and more i try to get better 
one percent every week, nice. um, <laughs> and uh, and and surround so myself. So you are you at a uh, dang? So what's so you, you're turning 40. You How many weeks is now? that? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it's too early for a math problem. <laughs> 13,800. No, I'm just joking. I have no idea. No, no, it's, uh, it, but it is a journey. I mean, yeah, and, and MRI really is a lifetime commitment and it's, it's not something you're going to get, but I'm just super fortunate to work in my hobby space. I mean, I don't feel like I need vacation very often. I mean, right. I, I'm excited to go to work. I'm excited to uh, pass on that knowledge and, and, yeah, like some other people have been so kind to do for me, and I think that's what we should all try to do. It's right. nice to see your passion for sure. I can tell you're you're uh, very happy with, um, I mean, what you've accomplished, and you should be. Um, I'm so. curious though. Well, <laughs> I do want to ask you a question that we ask all of our guests. What would you say has probably been the most satisfying moment in your he- healthcare career? Um, don't don't don't. I mean, what I get a kick out of. <laughs> is uh, so when I was first starting out as a tech and I first started to to I didn't know what I didn't know so half the time when you don't know what you don't know you start to think hmm, I'm pretty good at this stuff you know what I mean like <laughs> I, I mean I, I think I'm, I'm I mean, my grandma says I get more handsome every day. My, I mean, I, I, I'm, I, I think I'm, I think I'm terrific at MRI. And I was right. such a, I was a small fish in a very small pond at that point in time. And so when I started teaching, my my ego really calmed down because number one, I I met the people that uh, really should have an ego, yet they don't. Oh, right. And and so if those kind of people can say, if I ask them a question, say, you know, Matthew, I don't know, uh, that's not really my thing, but I'll get back to you. You know, it makes it to where I can say that much easier. And if they don't have a if they don't have an ego, why should I? And so there's no room for ego in MRI. And once you have an ego, right. it's time to retire. I mean, you're you're not gonna get any better. You're not gonna take any advice from anybody else. Right. And so as a teacher, that helped me. Where my success actually lies in other people's success. It doesn't come from me, you know, saying, you know, oh, I'm 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 terrific because right. I'm really not. I mean, I mean, I'm learning. I, I hope I'm getting better, and I hope I'm helping people. But um, the biggest, most satisfying thing for me is when people use what it is that we've got to take better care of their patients to to accomplish big goals. Like my mom died of, of, of ovarian cancer, right? So you, you want to, I'm sitting there like, they're scanning her for Mets and I'm just sitting there going, you gonna, no, okay. Oh, right. You know, I don't wanna be that guy. And, right. uh, but I mean, I think, I think we should all be trying to, to pass on the knowledge that we've got, and I think it's a big responsibility, right. and we're trying to make it to where no matter where you live, what language that you speak, what opportunities you have, the mentors that you have available for you, we can we can make it to where you have direct access to thought leaders, to um, to these concepts, and and yeah. not just once, but again and again and again. What a time to be alive, right? Well, I mean, the access to information. Well, I mean, on on my end, I, I I'll go to a conference. And sometimes I'm not sure what it is that I've just, I've just had, you know. And so right. one of the big things for us is to be able to make it to where you can, you can listen to this stuff again and again, you know, because what's it, 30 percent the first time you hear it, and then, right. um, and so for our safety stuff, we have, um, you know, Tobias Gilk donated hours and hours of his time for lectures to be able to, to be able to make it to where these people can go back again and again and really understand these concepts. What a great guy, right? Oh, man. Man. Big fan. You're going to have a hard time finding a, a better human that uh, that really does care about the vocation and really does care about safety right. and will will do whatever it takes to be able to make sure that that gets done. Right. I mean, he didn't know me. He, he loved the platform that we had, but him and I would get together. I mean, I didn't even meet Toby in person until like oh, uh, like t- like two years ago. <laughs> um, and But... But we sat every Sunday morning, he's drinking his coffee, we're going through, you know, making notes, things like that. He's right. recording these things and, and we've had really great we've had really great luck with finding these these gentlemen that um, you know, 'cause I, I can't I can't do it all and, and I think it would be also very I think it would also be very um, cocky to say, Oh, I'm gonna teach everything. No, it's it right. takes a village. I've got some of my friends are donate their time because they 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 care right. 
And so it's just a really cool community to be able to be a part of, and it makes it very easy to be generous with my time since other people are generous with theirs. And at, at, because of that, uh, the community really can grow and people can, um, people can increase patient care, increase knowledge, decrease button pushing, be empowered to actually be in charge of your own career and, and be in charge of your, your trajectory. And it's an honor to be able to do that for people and, and, and help them along the way. I mean, I, they're going to work hard, obviously, to right. be able to get where they're going. But we're just trying to give them the tools uh, at Imaging U for, for didactic understanding. And so that's my big – I mean, so there was, there was a lady that was uh, 72 years old. Uh, I'm sure now she's probably 74. I don't know. But uh, <laughs> she reached out to us and said, hey, I, 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 I'm going to lose my job. I'm not ARRT certified. Um, they've, been, they've given me until December to be able to pass my boards. I failed them twice. Oh, dang. Um, so uh, stressful, I can imagine, Jeez. Yeah, I had a single mom. Uh, I've, uh, I've, I've failed my boards twice. Right. Um, you know, and that's the ARRT. So I failed my boards twice. If I go back again, I can't do this. And, and so, I mean, for, for both of those, I, I said, absolutely, let's do this. And, I mean, that 72-year-old lady passed with like a 91%. What? Yeah, yeah she just killed After it. After failing awesome. it twice and got yeah. a 91 yeah, yeah, after yeah. that. Oh, my yeah, God. Yeah, so, I mean, that's, that's the good stuff. Damn, um, that's amazing. I, I, uh, that was, uh, that's amazing. I'll tell you, I would not tell you another story. It would make me cry. But, uh, <laughs> but we're doing – I'm very proud of what it is that we're doing, and we're continuing to, to do better um, as time goes on, create new courses, and, and everyone should have access to terrific – opportunities in education right. so we we are translatable to 117 different languages completely and um, we I built a learning management system to be able to be ADA compliant so American Disability Act compliant so if you are hard of hearing if you're hard of sight if you're a visual learner if you are an auditory learner it's all there and we want to be as inclusive as possible and and give everybody the opportunities that I've been lucky enough to stumble across uh, by way of my friends and my network. We're totally going to have to bring you back to talk about imaging you and some of the stuff that you're working on, man. Get you on, you know, do another podcast episode on that. I think that'd be great. Sure. I'd be happy to come. Yeah. yeah. Maybe wear his own three podcast shirt or something. You know? <laughs> I, I mean, if that's what the kids are wearing. I know the <laughs> <laughs> They're wearing it. Mm. <laughs> They're totally uh, wearing it. Well, thank you again for joining us. This has been a fun episode. I've learned a lot, actually. Yeah. Um, hope you guys did, too. Uh, Reggie? Can you, you think know, of anything? You know, big shout out to Ages, of course. Uh, you know, thanks, Ages. Yeah, big support from those guys, great guys, and then of course everybody out there who you know steadily watching us week after week, man. We really appreciate the support, and you know we want to keep everything going and keeping it good for you guys. So hang yeah, in there. Yeah, we're almost to two thousand subscribers. So cool. Uh, yeah, it's our goal to hit big that. leagues. You our know goal is to hit that soon. So <laughs> yeah, so tell your friends about us, uh, and if you haven't already, make sure to hit subscribe, and uh, I guess we, this is when we say Zone 3, we're out. Yeah, Zone 3, we're out. Thanks for having me. Good. <laughs>